Anunnaki and the blood of aliens on our Earth, according to claims and theories, the modern era has witnessed the growing popularity of mythological stories about ancient Mesopotamia. A huge role is in this was the work of a number of researchers who saw the connection between the Sumerian myths about the Anunnaki with the Ubiru and the theory of the origin of man with the participation of an alien civilization. Our understanding of the theory of ancient astronauts is based mainly on the transcription of cuneiform tablets executed by Zachariah Sitchin. His series of books, Chronicles of the Earth, forms the basis of an alternative history of the evolution of species, revealing an entertaining vision of the origin of man. In Sitchin's story about our past, there is an influential group of aliens under the name Anunnaki. According to the author of the idea, they invested their own DNA into Homo erectus, who later became the founder of modern man. Sophisticated genetic manipulation was made with the intention of using indigenous people with a weak mind as helpers to extract precious materials, minerals, from the bowels of our earth. However, the Anunnaki are represented by the equivalent of God from the Old Testament. And this is what their theory says. So what do cuneiform texts say about mythical aliens from Nibiru? How much does the version with the participation of aliens in their activities correspond to the real idea in the ancient world? Anunnaki and royal blood? Firstly, the Anunnaki are interpreted as royal blood, quote unquote, or the seed of Anu. Let's remember the Native Americans call the sky gods Anu, just like the Sumerians called them Anu. Isn't that something? The same word, exactly. Now, not those who described from heaven, who descended from heaven, or those who came from heaven to earth, as the followers of the theory of ancient astronauts claim. At the same time, the Anunnaki, Sumerian deities of the primordial time, this is the pantheon of the gods of the sons of the heavenly god Anu and his sister Ki. According to the number of prominent historians, it will be more true to consider the Anunnaki as demigods. Anu's sister Ki was not originally a deity and attained the status of goddess much later in the history of the mythological cycle. As William Clauser explains, many people wonder if Ki was considered a deity. Today there is no evidence of a cult, and his name appears only in a few texts of the Sumerians about creativity. Samuel Noah Kramer identifies Ki with the Sumerian goddess Ninhur Sag and claims that they were originally the same figure. She later became the Babylonian goddess and Akkadia Antu, the wife of god Anu, Sumerian An. In essence, this would mean that the Anunnaki themselves were born from the union of the gods of heaven and a mortal woman who would subsequently be defied, deified in the mythological tradition. In addition, Ki is a Sumerian symbol of earth and the wife of Anu is sometimes considered the personification of earth itself. This fact is similar to the biblical tradition where mortals were created from the dust of the earth, Genesis 2.7. The concept of a group of semi-divine beings more born of mortal women is very similar to the biblical and non-biblical traditions of the Nephilim. One of the most frequently mentioned ancient texts describing the Nephilim is the biblical book of Enoch, attributed to patriarch Enoch, the father of Methuselah. The book of Enoch is considered an apocryphal text today and is rejected by most dominant theological systems although this has not always been the case. Many of the early church fathers, such as Athenagoras and St. Clement of Alexandria, St. Irenaeus, St. Tertullian, accepted this book as a sacred script, and fragments of ten Aramaic copies of the Book of Enoch were found among the Dead Sea Scrolls. Enoch is also quoted in the Bible message of Jude, and it has been estimated that there are several more references in the New Testament. Why did they reject the records of Enoch? In short, he described space technology and flight in heaven. The most famous passage from the book of Enoch includes a detailed description of certain events before the flood recorded in the Bible, especially Genesis 6 verses 1 to 4. 
According to the Book of Enoch, a group of 200 fallen angels, known as observers or watchers, led by a man named Semyaza, descended to Mount Hermon, where they took the paternal oath with human women. All of them, quote, took their wives for themselves, each chose for himself, they began to come to them and to and be corrupted by them, and quote, the union that led to the birth of the great giants, the Nephilim. These giants finally swallowed all the products of people, and when people could no longer support them, the giants turned against them and devoured humanity. Book of Enoch, chapter 6 to 7. These actions provoked the inter and the intervention of God. He curses the giants to fight each other so that they can destroy each other in battle and sends archangels to bind their guardian leather leaders in the valley of Enoch the earth, book of Enoch 10. And as you know today, Hebrews text refers to these powerful observers as the Nephilim. Mount Hermon, abode of the Anunnaki gods, Researchers have found a serious, a serious missimilarity between the mythologies of the Anunnaki and the Nephilim. In 1971, Edward Lipinski, almost simultaneously with Sitchin, published an academic analysis of several ancient texts, including the ancient Babylonian version of the Gilgamesh epic. The legend of Gilgamesh's journey contains important information that show the true location of the Anunnaki sanctuary in cosmology and thought of the ancient East. The researchers found that, in fact, the Babylonian, the ancient Babylonian version of the Epic of Gilgamesh identifies Mount Hermon in Lebanon as the abode of the Anunnaki. Incidentally, this is a strong turn of the legend to the facts of history. Edward emphasizes lines 12 to 21 of Gilgamesh in ancient Babylon, which reports the destruction of Humbaba, the keeper of the dwelling of the gods, from the companion of Gilgamesh and Kidu. The text directly confirms that they penetrated the forest and discovered the secret abode of the Anunnaki. Later mythologies offer different, alter, they offer different alternative places for the house of the Anunnaki. However, Lipinski believes that the oldest Mesopotamian and Tanoan texts of the Middle East point to the cedar forest of Mount Hermon. Quote, we find traces of the oldest tradition in the mention of the mountain, which was the abode of the gods. Access to it was hidden by the cedar forest, whose guardian was Humbaba. This mountain was the place in the depths of which the Anunnaki lived, according to an ancient Babylonian version of the Epic of Gilgamesh. In the ancient Babylonian period, the Anunnaki were still considered gods. Therefore, Mount Hermon must be identified as the abode of the gods, of the Anunnaki. End quote. Edward Lipinski also points out that Mount Hermon was considered the custodian of international treaties in the ancient world and links this tradition with the oath performed by observers in the Book of Enoch. Having included apocryphal texts in his research, such as the Testament of the Twelve Patriarchs in the Book of Enoch, Lipinski concludes, quote, Mount Hermon is a cosmic mountain that unites the earth with the lower heavens. We find the same idea in the episode of the Sons of God from the Book of Enoch. Life-giving creatures gather at the top of Mount Hermon because it is the mountain of the gods, Canaan Olympus, end quote. Mount Hermon is located at the southern tip of the anti- Levian mountain range occupying the border between Syria and Lebanon. The highest peak of Mount Hermon reaches 2,814 meters. The area abounds with ancient altars dating back thousands of years and continued the ho to host shrines and rituals until the time of uh, King Constantine the Great. He was the, uh, he's a saint of the Christian church. He was the one that uh, allowed the freedom of Christians to um, follow their faith in 325 AD. Now, of great interest is the fact that Gilgamesh was known in the ancient world for his knowledge, which he received in the antediluvian world. Wherever he explored centers of power, Gilgamesh learned old wisdom. He who traveled the distant road to the gods and crossed the ocean first restored his knowledge of the antediluvian era. These passages close the circle with an interpretation of the ancient Babylonian version of the Epic of Gilgamesh, 
where the ancient king went to Mount Hermon, the monastery of the Anunnaki on Earth. So, contrary to popular sayings in modern literature and other media, there is data found by expert academic research. A comparative study of cuneiform letters and other ancient texts shows that the true identity of the Anunnaki is found in the Eastern tradition of the group of demigods born from an improper relationship between divine beings and mortal women. The described events occurred on Mount Hermon, located in the Antilivian Anti mountain range. These creatures are often associated with knowledge of the world before the flood, and later they have various functions in the underworld. And the above facts, quote unquote, certainly did not state anything, but they turned the Anunnaki into the equivalent of Elohim, quote unquote, which creates a person in the book of Genesis. The same reference to ancient sources inspired the idea of extremely developed civilizations of outer space. This is on Solask. Please leave your comments and thank you for your support. Support my Patreon account. The daily posts are five videos daily and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below.